Welcome back everyone to the Meeple Marathon and our continued coverage of Cloudspire. This is the extended playthrough of the solo tutorial mission that can be found in the newest second edition rulebook of the game. So in the previous video, we played through the tutorial portion where they literally held your hand and gave you step-by-step -step instructions on how to uh, interact with your your minions and your heroes they even told us what the outcome of certain die rolls were going to be so this is where they left us they actually <clears throat> did not even have us complete the wave so we're left here with a one health battleborn and a three health dispatch um, and we're going to head up here in an attempt to attack the gate uh, we've also got osh here who has just flipped over to his um, promoted side and um, that's pretty much it. Um, a lot of what the tutorial was, was going over basic steps. So I'm not going to necessarily make this a how to play video, but I will kind of try and talk through my decisions just in case this is the, the first of the videos you watched. But if you want to see the beginning of this scenario, check out the video uh, linked in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, Again, the Grove Tenders have all been wiped out at this point, so we are basically just continuing to take our turns, hoping to get past the um, Spires here and maybe make it to the gate. All right, so um, let's see here. One of our missions is to a build a dispatch platform on this hex right here or defeat both of these shrubberies, but these guys have camouflage, which means my dispatch can't see them at range. You have to be right up next to them, which pretty much means Osh needs to get there. Um, and then the last one is have five or more um, gate health before the, um, by the end of wave three. So there's actually only three waves and we're most of the way through wave one here. So let's continue. Um, all right. So we're basically doing movement here. One, two, one, two. And we're gonna have Osh move one, two to right here. Okay, then Spires are going to fire. This one can definitely reach either one of these. And Spires are always going to prioritize things that they can actually defeat. So they will prioritize the Battleborn. Um, I'm finally getting to actually roll some dice now so I will roll, there's a single orange chip underneath this spire. And so I take a single die and I roll it out and it definitely crushed our Battleborn. So that's the end of him. So he'll go back into our tray. All right. Um, then at this point we would be able to explore, but my Battleborn who was adjacent to this landmark no longer is. So I have nothing to explore. And so now I can attack. Um, I get to choose the, um, the order of my attacks, but I will simply keep this simple. I will have Osh attack the shrubbery. His two attacks simply takes out the bottom um, fortress here. What's interesting is that shrubberies normally do get an attack chip, but the scenario had us set them up with simply two fortifications, so they actually don't have an attack. Um, they're really just kind of here Again, this is an introductory scenario. So Osh is just gonna sit here, cut down the shrubbery with his ax and call it a day. The dispatch, however, will take a shot at the retall spire here. It simply has a attack of one. So it will take out the bottom chip, which now means that this guy only has a range of two where he used to have a range of three. All right. Um, so essentially that's the end of, of our turn. Normally this would bounce back to the Grove Tenders, but again, they're done. So we're gonna go again. Um, we're gonna go one, two. Oh, and you know what? Osh, no, Osh is about to, sorry. One, two. So now at this point, the dispatch has moved one, two, out of range of this spire. And this spire actually has range only in these adjacent hexes, which is interesting because I'll be able to place myself right here and it won't be able to hit me. Again, very interesting. Um, okay, so 
what I'm going to do is have Osh attack the shrubbery first. Again, just removing that. And now he will gain... Um, what do we want to give him? I think... I want to tap roots have three. Yeah, let's give him an attack upgrade. No, he needs to survive. So I'm gonna give him a fortification upgrade. Okay, all right. And then the dispatch here, uh, technically I should have done exploration first, sorry. The dispatch cannot reach this spire, nor can he reach this spire. Um, so let's pick, let's pick the swamp one. Okay, it is a source peddler. Now, I, yeah, I can flip this thing over and leave him here. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is what happens when, when you reveal a landmark, you get the choice of whether you want to keep it a secret to yourself or reveal it if you um there are certain landmark minions that have to be revealed because of a keyword foreboding or something like that but since i have revealed this minion i now have to attack it with my dispatch my minion doesn't know any better he doesn't get the option so he is going to attack for one and the source peddler here is going to um retaliate for uh two so that wasn't the best thing. But what this means now is that as Grove Tenders start to come out of here, they're also going to attack this thing and it's gonna attack back. I'd love to get the sixth source out of this. I don't know if I will. Um, you know, ideally, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not really sure. So what a good question is that I have at this point is, and I'll ask it here in a second, so essentially that's the end of our wave. And so now we move on to a second wave. And this is my dispatch's movement. He can go one, two, and I'm gonna to choose to push him all the way. He's still adjacent to the gate. He can reach this one. He can also reach this one. So my question is, is do I get to choose who this dispatch attacks? Because he could essentially sit here and take care of this guy and take care of this guy before he then takes a final chop at the gate, which the gate then retaliates and knocks him out. So let me try and figure that out real quick. Okay, so here is the answer. Your minions uh, attack as a specific stage of your turn during the onslaught phase. Your minions must attack if they are able to. Minions can attack adjacent opposing units, spires, and fortress gates. Adjacent landmarks with health chips under them can also be attacked, even if they are not landmark minions. If a minion has multiple possible targets, you choose which target it attacks. Your units... Perform their attacks one after another in the order of your choosing. Unlike movement, you can choose to have a hero attack in between minions. So I'm about to basically just ruin the Grove Tender's day here because the dispatch actually has a range of two. So I have a lot of options here. I get to choose. So before we attack with him, um, before we end our movement here, I am actually going to go boom, boom right here with Osh. So... Uh, he can do this because he has the tree symbol on there, and this is a tree space. So, um, oh no, I don't want to do that. Or do I? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Because he's only going to hit him for one. Okay, now Osh is gonna go one, two right here. Okay, all right, so the dispatch is gonna choose to take a shot at this guy. He does not have range, so he cannot fight back. Osh will take this off the shrubbery, and we're done. So we're gonna move on. He is now at adjacent to the fortress gate, so he doesn't take any more movement. Um, Osh is gonna be right here too, so Osh can take this guy out. 
um, and he's already got his maximum upgrade and I forgot to take my one source for the other shrubbery and so I'll take two this time shrubbery gives one source alright so I have completed one of the objectives I'm trying for all three here okay and then the dispatch will fire on this guy alright um, and then again it's my we, we just roll back to my turn so I'm actually gonna go one two this way I'm gonna peek at this one and it's a rift walk overlord rift walk overload um, let's see here rift walk means units may move onto this chip as if it were a path hex Units that move onto this chip are teleported to another chip with Rift Walk of the controlling faction's choice, if able. If the destination's chip is currently occupied by another unit or group of units, those units are defeated. Defeating opposing grouped units this way grants the reward for only the top unit. And what's overload mean? On your turn, if you have a unit adjacent to this landmark, you may spend six source to discard this landmark and gain its reward, which is a relic card. Okay, I'm not really sure I wanna spend all that, but okay. So I've revealed that, that's fine. So dispatch um, at this point is going to take a shot here and it can't, okay. so. This is um, keeping the dispatch because the dispatch only attacks for one. Okay, so the dispatch is going to fire at the peddler because if the dispatch had attacked the gate, the gate would have retaliated, instantly killing him, and the wave would have instantly ended. But I want Osh to be able to come up here and take care of the source peddler. So um, again, we're gonna rotate all back around. I will move up right here. The dispatch does not move, and I will attack with Osh first, taking this guy out and gaining the six source. So I now have a massive 14 source, which is amazing. Okay, uh, and finally the dispatch is going to attack the gate. It goes down to nine, and the gate retaliates, knocking out my dispatch. The AI does not collect source okay so we have finished the wave um let's get ready for wave two so as we start wave two here the first thing we need to do i'm gonna lay this right here is roll the event die okay and it is a four four is the brawn and lose two source Okay, well that stinks, but I'm about to get some of it right back because then we go to the income phase and I get three source at the beginning of this. So I'm gonna jump up to 15. Now we can do a market phase as normal since I am the first player because Bronin is listed here. Um, I get my first pick and the Grove Tenders essentially aren't gonna buy anything. I am actually going to um, purchase this uh, Merc Hero here. Barry Brund for two source. So this ticks down to three. All right, and now that I have purchased him, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give him two health. I can um, line him up here with my, yeah, with my other um, characters. So the next thing we do is the build phase. So the Grove Tenders construct a retall spire. Um, so imitating the other one, um, it tells us that it's got an attack over a fortification. And so it's stuck that up there. Um, and then, um, so what I am unsure about is it says that you have to, to build a tower, you have to have, uh, influence over the hex that you want to build it on. Well, these two are like little mini hexes right here. And then there's this big one, which technically is not adjacent to my fortress. So I'm not 100% sure whether I can build here or not, um, to be perfectly honest with you. And this is changing my entire strategy here. 
Um, take note of renown. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So the architect can build a dispatch platform on um, an adjacent source while ignoring ignoring influence restrictions. So perfect. I can build here without the architect, and I can build for free. So there's a couple things I'm going to do during the build phase, and that is to upgrade my fortress. So according to the Bronin sheet here, if I start upgrading my assembly, I can bring in my Aegis minions, permanently promoted, and then if I upgrade it again, my architect minions will come in permanently promoted. So what I really wanted was to get to the architects, but I can't, um, I can't uh, upgrade the second assembly without upgrading the first. So I'm actually gonna just go ahead and pay for both um, for nine source total. So it's a big purchase. But what this is doing is giving me a promoted architect with a movement of three. So one, two, three, he's gonna be adjacent to this right off the bat. Um, so no matter what they throw at us, which you're gonna see here in a minute is one of those quick treads that can run across the plains, he can get his job done before the treed gets in the way. So that is what I have chosen to do during the build phase. Normally you would go back and forth, but we're just gonna do it. Okay, and then uh, for the uh, prep phase, it gives us eight CP. So I have decided to bring out an architect and an Aegis. So I'm going to put the Aegis at the bottom since he's slower and the architect on top. And I'm also going to place my newly acquired Merc hero on top. I'm not 100% sure if you need to follow the same rules with the mercenaries, whether he has to be on the top or the bottom, um, but we want him, um, he's pretty quick, so he's just gonna get out of the way. All right, last but not least here, it tells us what the Grove Tenors are gonna do. They, on top, have a promoted treed all by himself, and then underneath, you can see the brackets around the war briar and the taproot. So the taproot sits underneath the war briar, and it tells us what the taproot will summon if that uh, occurs. So the war briar is gonna be on the bottom, treed on top. All right, and so everything is stacked up. We are ready to go. And since the Baranin get to start, um, we get to go first. So the first thing I'm going to do is get Osh kind of the heck out of the way for right now. He could use some healing up. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So he's gonna go one, two, remember we have to keep him alive. He's just gonna go there and be done. All right, um, then we're gonna go over here to our hero. He's got a movement of three and he can move on to mountain spaces, which means he can essentially go anywhere except on the water. So what he's gonna do to make sure he's out of the way is go one, two, three, right here, because he can move on to the mountain spaces and now he's adjacent to this thing. All right, then the architect is gonna take his first, uh, his full movement, one, two, three. And according to our sheet here, architects before or after this unit's movement, you may choose to do one of the following, and that is to build a dispatch platform, um, ignoring, or at no cost, ignoring influence restrictions. So boom, and now we have completed our second objective. The only thing left we have to do is keep our gate health above five, five or above. All right, so he's done, and now the Aegis is going to make his single movement. All right, so at this point, I have adjacency here and adjacency here. Um, spires would normally fire, but this is the only one with range and then those two, so nothing's gonna fire me. So let's take a peek at these. All right, a Traxor Hellion, Hellion. Okay, so this has the engage and the foreboding. So what this is saying is that the foreboding, it has to, uh, we have to flip it over and engage means that if we are adjacent to it, right, units able to attack this landmark must do so. So even my hunter would have to engage him and for boating, when you explore this landmark, you must reveal it. So unfortunately, I don't get to flip him back over. Um, and then we'll go ahead and take a peek at this one as well. 
It is a Sabisa with toxic secretion. Okay. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna flip that back over for right now. I know that that's there. Um, okay. So another one of those things. We know what they do. All right. Um, so at this point, I would normally attack. And the only thing I have the option to attack is the Traxor Helion, which I have to do. So I attack it for two, and it's going to retaliate back for one. Now, I have Armored on the Aegis, but Armored only works when you are attacked, not when an object retaliates, which is why Fortresses um, will take just about anybody out. Otherwise, you could just walk an Aegis right up to the Fortress Gate, and it would last forever. All right, so we are done with our turn. It is the Grove Tender's turn, so the tree, remember, can go over the plane spaces, and so it's making a beeline, essentially. We saw it do this last time. One, two, three. All right, uh, and then the Warbriar, however, has to stay on the path, so it's going to go one, two. All right, at this point, um, Spires can fire here on the tree. So we will take one die and roll it. And it attacked the tree for one. Um, hold on, what does tough mean? Tough might mean something here. Tree, tough. If retaliation damage dealt to this unit exceeds two, reduce it to two. Ram, when this unit attacks a spire, and a spire instead of dealing damage, you may remove any attack upgrade from the spire. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, all right, so one thing I failed to do is, and this is another reason why I wanted to promote the architect, is that anytime they do this fancy build action, you actually have to either unpromote the architect, or if he's already unpromoted, he actually leaves. He goes back to the fortress and you lose him. So, um, interestingly enough, so I have some choices here because now the Warbriar's not near anything. It doesn't explore anyways. The tree, however, is able to attack this spire. It's the only thing it can attack. And we know that Tuff is actually gonna take the spire's teeth away. Without this chip, the spire cannot attack. Um, it has no die to roll. So, um, interestingly enough, Okay, so that's its turn. All right. So now we go to our turn and we start with movement. So what do I want to do? Mm. With all of this mess. Okay, so I think I actually want to use my architect because he can before or after his movement. So I'm gonna use before his movement, promote an adjacent dispatch platform to a siege tower. Okay. And I believe I can do this without having promoted my uh, fort. Um, promote an adjacent dispatch platform to a siege tower keeping existing upgrades. Um, although if I just flipped it over, then I guess would it stay without an attack chip. So instead, I'm going to add an upgrade, ignoring upgrade capacity. Uh, I can do this at no cost. But then my architect has done his duty and he's done. All right. So A just now moves, boom. And Osh, what do we want Osh to do? I'm actually gonna have Osh. No, he's gonna stay put. Now, normally you would do this at the end of the round, I believe, but um, 
If Osh does not move and does not attack, he gets to gain a health up to his maximum. So now he's up to maximum and has a fortification underneath. Okay. All right. And this guy's a hero, so I don't have to move him. I'm going to explore again. And I have revealed the Sebesa this time with four health. But since nobody moved, it doesn't do its toxic secretion. So now I can attack and it doesn't have any sort of retaliation, so it doesn't really matter. I will simply attack two with the Aegis and one with this fella here. And that's it. Okay, back over to the Grove Tenders. So we'll have the tree go first. It just wants to get to the gate. One, two. Um, and technically, one, two, one, two. Um, really, and this is a, a point where, you know, this is playing by the rules. As long as I advance it up to its maximum or try to advance it its maximum and continue moving it towards the gate, I'm following its terrain restrictions, which it can be on forest spaces, I am allowed to move it here. Um, this is part of the game. This is part of the whole programmed movement thing. You can use that to your advantage. So the treed has moved and the war briar will move one, two. It is still in range of my dispatch platform. So my dispatch platform will get to take a shot at it and it will miss. That's okay. And so now war briar has nothing to do. The treed is going to look around and it's actually going to hit the Barry Brunt here because the Barry Brunt is a hero which it can defeat, um, which is unfortunate because the Barry Brunt was just about to defeat this thing. So technically, if I had thought about it, I would have put it here because um, I could have just moved Osh over. So yeah. Let's just say that's where he went. Um, the Spire still could have attacked him. It still missed. All right, and now the only thing it has to attack is, ooh, the Aegis or the Dispatch Platform. And I feel like it's actually gonna do the Dispatch Platform. Um, What was tough? Yeah. Um, again, I'm not really sure if I could have made that choice or if there was a specific choice that should have been made there, but we're gonna say that's what it did. All right, so it's back to me. So I can do some moving here. The Aegis is stuck because the tree is blocking its way. Barry Brunt here can stay put, and Osh can um, move over like this. All right, so exploration, Spire's firing, no. So I'm gonna start with Barry Brunt attacking this guy, and this is gonna give us four source. So up to eight. And he gets an upgrade because he's a hero. Um, no promoted side, so what do we wanna give him? Let's give him some punch. So I'm gonna give him, he's uh, up to two attack. All right. Let's see here. Um, how do we want to do this? Who do we want to be up first? Let's have so Osh is already at full capacity. So Osh is actually going to attack first for two. We'll take two off the top of the tree. We'll retaliate for two. And so that's like that. All right, so now the Aegis gets to attack for two, and it's defeating it. But if for some reason the tree had even just one health left, it would not have retaliated. It's already retaliated at this point. Um, 
a unit can only retaliate once per turn. So it would have saved the Aegis, which is going to continue to march along and eventually come toe to toe with the Warbri here. Osh can sit where he is right here and um, heal back up. Okay, so we have done attacking. The Warbriar is going to go one, two. And at this point, I am, as it comes back around to me, I'm going to take one of my limited build options to spend two source, one, two, to put an attack chip back onto the bottom of this dispatch platform here. So there you go. All right, so now I can attack when this guy comes around. Okay, so back to us again. So Aegis is gonna go one, two, or no, the Aegis is just moving one. What a slow moving fella here. All right, so he moves one. Osh is going to stay put, so he will gain his health back. And the Brandy Bund here, I think, is actually going to go one, two, and help take out this Traxor Hellion here before it just does any more damage. So, all right, so the Brandy Bund has to attack. He will attack it for two, and it will attack back for one. Okay. All right, so I'm done. So the War Briar continues its march. One, two, and um, has nothing to do. But it is within Spire's firing range. So let's take this, and it rolls a two. So the War Briar actually takes a big hit from our dispatch platform. All right, but now he's got nobody to attack. Okay, so back to me um, I'm gonna go one and one right here like so yeah I think that's the best um, also I wanted to take my second limited build option here and I want to um, add a third one so this is the third chip so I'm actually gonna have to tick down three source boom 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 to five and I want to add another attack chip okay and this thing can actually have five total chips under it the two starting chips and then three upgrades okay so back to no, it is my turn. So what do I want to do? I actually want to have Osh. Do I want to do this? Hmm. Yeah. Osh. Attack the Warbriar. Defeats it. That gives us a source upgrade here. I feel like something's about to happen so yeah this I really couldn't keep this from happening um, all right so I'm going to take an attack upgrade for defeating the war briar yeah and so now what happens is Aegis attacks the taproot for two the taproot retaliates for one um, and the taproot now with one health will summon, what did it say? A vine herald. So how this works is that the taproot gets flipped over, which you can see now does, it, it actually promotes, but it's like the reverse promote. So it loses its keyword summon and it actually just now has one health, but it hides underneath the vine herald. So the Vine Herald stacks on top of it. We have to give it its full health. and But then it doesn't get to activate because it just got summoned to this turn. So I think this worked out okay. All right, and last but not least, Brandy Bun here is going to attack the Traxer. 
And what the Traxxer is going to give us is a free um, build of a, hold on. Um, let me just confirm what this symbol means. Um, mama mia. Spire reward. The defeating faction may immediately construct a spire at no cost on the defeated unit or spire's hex if that hex contains a source well, ignoring influence restrictions. Well, I am actually adjacent to it, so that's fine. But I can put out another drilling, or no, dispatch platform. So yes, let's do that right there. I like that. So he doesn't give us any source, he gave us the free build. Okay, so back to um, back over here. So now the Vine Herald wants to move too, and the Aegis is in the way, but I feel like at this point it could take a lateral movement. So I think it could, does go one, two for several reasons, because now it, um, has ranged attack. It's also gotten out of my way. Um, so yeah, it's going to two range. It prioritizes something it can defeat, but it can't defeat. It, it would know that. It would know that it can't defeat the Aegis with one attack because it's got armored. So before it does anything, I get to Spire's Fire with my dispatch platform. And I did one damage to it. All right. And so now it is going to damage my spire. Okay. All right. Yes, I think that is correct. Okay. So back to us and our possible movement. Uh, what do we want to do with Barry Bund here? He's got quite a lot of movement. One to so I kind of like I'm just right there yeah no one two yeah that's good okay uh, Aegis is gonna go one again very slow March and Osh is gonna go one two up to here there's nothing to fire at us so he will attack this thing and it will go away, leaving the tap root with just a single health behind. And I get one source for the Vine Herald. Okay. All right, he can't attack from where he is. Nope. Okay. All right, so back to um, Grove Tenders, he moves one. Now Spires will fire on him with only one die this time. And it misses, which is unfortunate. So it's going to look around and it says, can I defeat a Spire? No. Can I defeat a hero? No. Can I reach? No, I cannot reach the minion. So it will go after Osh. Yeah, I think that's it right there. Okay. Um, all right, so now it's our turn. So Aegis is gonna move one. We're gonna have Brandy Bun actually run up here. He's gonna take care of the tap root. And Osh is going to stay put to get his health back. Okay. Uh, Spire's Fire, one, two, can't reach the Aegis yet, one, two, it's gonna reach him right here. Um, so Brandy Bun can attack the Taproot to give us two more source. 
All right. And now at this point, um, these two are going to go into campfire mode because it's only the Aegis left. So, which is unfortunate because I had had plans to run Osh up there and take out this tower, but it's just not going to happen. So, Aegis moves here. Nothing. Aegis moves here. This thing can now attack. Um, it rolled a one, um, but I believe Spire's firing attacking blocks that one. So again, he moves here, it gets to attack him again, and it missed. So now it can attack this thing, removing, because of Assault, that, and then attack this, and remove this from the game. Boom, boom. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure if a Spire's attack is considered an attack when Armored comes into play. But either way, this thing's just going to go one, two, three, and he'll stop right here because he's out of range of this. And he will attack the Fortress Gate for two. Boom, boom. And the Fortress Gate will hit him back because it's retaliation. He cannot stop it. All right. So that is the end of wave two. Let's move on to wave three. Okay, so as we start wave three here, I'm gonna go ahead and roll the event die and it was a three, so the brown lose two source again. So boom, boom, um, but that's okay. So income phase, two source, or three source, one, two, three. So I got plus one out of that. Grove Tenders, since they're first, they're actually going to purchase the Earthscape. It's off camera. Uh, I wasn't even going to buy it anyway, so that's fine. I am going to spend two source, so we tick down to 10 here to purchase this tower. All right. So then build phase, the Grove Tender is actually not going to do anything, so I get to do a couple things here. I'm going to start by placing my wind tunnel, my wind turbine right here. I can place it for free because I already paid the source. And I could do this because I have a spire here. So this hex I have influence over, um, or this tile I have influence over, and this tile is adjacent to it. So i um, pretty sure I can build here. Then um, I am going to spend, so this thing can actually now hit three spaces away. So like one, two, let's see, one, two, three, as soon as they start getting here. Um, so, but it needs an attack upgrade. All right, so we're gonna do that. And then, uh, and I had to spend three source to get it to that, boom, 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 boom. So there's my three. And then I'm going to spend three source to finish off my assembly upgrade. So boom, 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 which is going to give me my construction yard or assembly die. I built the construction yard. Now once per wave during the build phase, I may roll this die as a build option. You may add the rolled upgrade to the bottom of one of your spires, ignoring upgrade capacity. So let's see what we roll here. All right, we rolled a single attack chip. So I think I'm gonna add that to this guy here. Okay, so this is a pretty formidable foe. Um, all right, and now essentially I've, I've used that. If I had done it earlier, if I were playing four waves, I would get to use it again. Um, but that, spending three to upgrade there was cheaper than spending four to add this chip here. Um, okay. <sighs> yeah, I think we're good. So now at this point I get 12 CP. So I have chosen to, um, bring out a source siege, which is kind of like a vehicle. So it costs six CP, but it has to, it has the transport keyword, which means it has to take someone with him. So I spent two more to put a Battleborn into the Source Siege. And so it, they kind of group together. And then I'm gonna put an Architect on top. Again, my Architects all come in promoted. So there is 
my 12 CP. Doesn't seem like much, but hopefully it's enough because look at this ridiculousness that they're gonna get. They get a promoted Warbriar underneath a promoted Warbriar. Underneath a promoted Vine Herald grouped with an Ogre Growth, grouped with a Taproot, grouped with the Grizzled Oak, grouped with another Taproot. I mean, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous because on top of all of that, this stack is getting obnoxiously tall, is a treed, promoted treed. So, oh my goodness, here we go. That giant stack goes over there. Okay, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, the Grove Tenders are going first this round, which I did not really think about prior to uh, leaving Osh sit right here because the treed is gonna go one, two, three. All right, then this Vine Herald is gonna, this giant stack is gonna go one, two, because it has to stay on the path. The Warbriar is gonna go one, two, but stop, and this Warbriar if it can, it has to come out of the gate, so it goes right there. All right. So, yeah, I think I definitely want to upgrade this guy here as much as I can. All right. So, at this point, Spires will fire, and um, I get to roll a single die at the treed. One. Okay. One's better than nothing. All right, and so what does tough means if retaliation damage exceeds two, which it would. All right, so the only thing anybody has anything to attack because this thing is one, two, three away from me. It has a range of two. So the white, the vine herald is kind of like the vehicle here too, although it doesn't have, no, never mind, it has capture. I'll have to look up that words. Anyways, so it's going to hit Osh for two, which is going to hurt. Osh would normally retaliate for three, but the tough status reduces it, keeps it at two. So there we go. All right. Um, so what do we want to do here? Okay. So their turn is over with. So I'm gonna do some stuff here. I am gonna get Osh to safety. So he's gonna run back over here. Barry Brun's gonna go one, two, three. Yeah, I'm okay with this. The tree is over top of a Vine Herald. Okay. Hmm. Okay, yep, we're gonna move that there. The architect is going to take his movement, so he's gonna go one, two, three, and after his movement, he is going to um, upgrade this guy for free, and he flips over. Okay, um, and then the source siege goes one, two, has three range, one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, one, two, three, still can't get to the tree, but that's fine. Barry Brund here is going to attack the tree for two because he has an upgrade chip. So that's gonna take care of the tree. It's going to give us two source. And the tree is gone and Barry Brund here gets He's gonna get an upgrade, so we're gonna give him that. All right, good. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so everybody that can attack did attack. Um, so it's back to the Grove Tenders. So the White Herald, the Vine Herald's gonna go one, two, one, two, three. All right, so the next phase, these guys are gonna be one, two, and one. Two. And this one has to now get back on the path. So it goes one, 
two. All right. So this guy, one, two, three, can't quite get there, so close. Um, but this guy can definitely hit here. One, two, no, that's it. So Spires will fire on the Vine Herald here. I upgraded him, so now he gets to roll two dice. So two attack against the Vine Herald. One, two. And what does capture mean? Let's just look and see. Capture. After this unit defeats an opposing faction minion, you may place that minion beside your fortress. When the minion's controlling faction damages your fortress gate, return the minion to its barracks. You can have a maximum of three minions captured for each. So I don't know what the point of that is, but okay. So obviously Osh did not run far enough away because This Vine Herald is going to kill him now. Yeah. One, two. Osh got as far away as he possibly could. But this Vine Herald came in. And Osh cannot stop it. Because the Vine Herald is going to prioritize anything it can defeat. Ugh. And Osh is defeated as an instant loss condition, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it. The Vine Herald would target Osh. Osh would lose his final health. Technically, I guess I could have, when I was here with Osh, I should have run, like, over here. So, let's just say, for the sake of showing off the game, that I had the forethought to do that. Alright, so this guy would have moved in here, and now he prioritizes... Um, one, two, yeah, so he can't reach Osh, but he can reach Bra Barry Brund here. He cannot defeat anybody, so his two range allows him to hit Barry Brund. But, hold on, Barry Brund has evasive, which means when this unit is attacked by a unit with range, reduce the damage dealt to one. Okay, so it still is one. All right. And then these guys don't do anything. Okay. So, now it's back to me. I know this is all hypothetical. It's fine. But I want to see how it would have turned out if I had paid attention. So, um, at this point, the architect could go around. I believe that's my option. One, two, <coughs> one, two. Yeah, I think this is legal. It can make a lateral movement if it cannot go forward. And I am technically advancing closer to the gate. Okay, so um, Barry Brund here is, what is he gonna do? Can't do much. He's pretty much toast anywhere he goes. So let's just position him in a nice spot where he can do some ambushing maybe. Yeah, one, two, okay. Yeah, we'll put him right there. Osh is gonna stay put and heal up, which was the plan all along. And I 
I'm going to also take this opportunity to do a limited build option and put one, two, three, four, my fifth upgrade on this tower. So taking it down to one, I'm gonna give it a third attack die. Oh boy. All right. Um, okay, so everybody's moved now. Um, the only person that's going to be attacking is the Source Siege to the Vine Herald, like so. Um, the Vine Herald, however, has range, so I believe it can retaliate back. Oh, you know what? The Vine Herald should have been in range of this guy all along, too. So... Maybe with two things, this thing would have been defeated. So I don't feel so bad having run Osh up here. All right, I completely missed that, that this was this was not the only Spire that could attack this guy. All right, but let's move on. So Grove Tenders, Vine Herald's gonna go one, two. This thing is gonna go one, two, one, two, and one, two. So I will, of course, with my Winds Tunnel attack, the Vine Herald here with my three attack dice. And we'll see what kind of damage I can do. Just two. That's a little disappointing. All right. Um, and now this thing is in range of here and here. So that's two more things attacking it. And it's definitely dead. All right, so this thing never stood a chance. All right, Vine Herald, and that was one source. All right, I need to get some more source so I can do one more uh, optional build. Okay, this thing does have two range, so it can go one, two, and take out one of my spires yeah okay all right so now what's gonna happen um we need to move some people so one two technically this thing can now go one two all right and brandy Brund is going to go here, and Osh is going to stay put, not do any attacking, and he's back up to full health. Okay, so can I take care of this? First thing we're going to have to do is Brandy Bun attack the Vine Herald. So that takes it out for one more source tick. And so then the Ogre Growth comes in underneath it with Rooted. What does rooted mean? If this unit is adjacent to a spire, it may stay in place instead of moving. It must move on the next turn in which it can make progress. All right, so it's not adjacent to a spire, though. And now that this guy is taken out of the way, the source siege can attack this for one, and it has no way to retaliate. Okay, good. Um... And Brandy Bun's kind of blocked the path here, which he's going to take one for the team, I guess. All right. Yep. Okay. So back to their turn. Nobody can move. So I guess technically it could do this. Boom, boom, boom. Like so. And so then the wind funnel is going to fire just two attack dice this time. Two, that's better. Could have been four. All right, so Spire's fired. And the Ogre Growth here will... Wait, it was like this? So this thing would have gone one, two, one, two. Yeah, I feel like that's what it should have done. And Impale is... 
Okay, so it does damage to adjacent units, not spires. Okay. Alright, so we'll have this attack Barry Brund first. He is finally toast. Alright, and then the Warbriar will actually do that, which is unfortunate. Hmm. Okay, and then that's it. So it's my turn now. Let's send you first. One, two, so then you go here. One, two, like this. And Osh is gonna need to start coming down into the fight. So he's gonna go one, two, right there. All right. Um, so no spires to fire at me. The architect is going to hit for one. And he will hit back for two. Okay. And then the source siege can finish this guy off, leaving a taproot behind with just three. And that was three health. One, two, three, three source. Hmm. <clears throat> what do I want to do here? All right. Um. <laughs> Ah, should be over here. He should still be promoted. But I have no way of getting to this top route because he's blocked on all sides. So either way, um, he would attempt to go and none of them can move. Um, so Spires would fire, but this thing has no attack dice left. So the tap route um, would prioritize one, two, one, two, I guess it would prioritize the architect right in front of him. So take one from the architect and the architect would retaliate for one. And then this thing would go boom, boom and take this tower out completely because it's got nothing else to do. So, hmm, kind of at a stalemate here. All right, um, back to me. The architect wants to go and it can't. Source Siege wants to go and it can't. Um, I would love to run Osh in here because the tapper is just gonna summon something which is just a huge pain in the butt. move right to here yeah and we can't do anything else so the architect's gonna attack this thing it's gonna attack back and take him out all right and then the source siege will attack him but he's already hold on before he does that he's at one health as he's gonna flip over like that and summon a treed luckily he's just a regular treed but still four health on this treed okay so then the source siege can attack the treed for one all right 
Um, yeah, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and on my turn, take a limited build action to do one, two, three, four. Give this tower a fourth range chip, ticking me down to two. That is my second limited build action. I guess I'm supposed to put two in here, like so. All right, um, yes, because now they're gonna go and this thing's gonna go boom and stop. This guy's gonna go boom and this guy doesn't go anywhere. So Spires can now fire one, two, three, two dice on this thing and two hits, that's not bad. Okay, it cannot retaliate. And so then it cannot kill off either one of these, so it will attack Osh. Osh will in turn retaliate back and take out the treed. And the taproot is left with a single thing. All right, these guys can't do anything. Okay. So the source siege and Osh are kind of stuck here. Um, yeah, does Osh need to back up? I almost feel like he does, just in case. Okay. One, two, yeah. We're gonna put you right there, buddy, keep you alive. Okay, so the Source Siege can't move. Um, it will attack the Taproot. Taproot cannot attack back, leaving this giant grizzled oak in the way. One, two, three, four, five. Six health on the grizzled oak, good gracious. Okay, um, and that's it. <clears throat> so now the AI is going to go, and he wants to move. He can't, so he has to get fired upon by the spires. Come on, two twos. One, two. It's better than nothing. One, two. And it will attack now the source siege for two. And the source siege will retaliate for one. Again, these guys are just stuck. Okay, so back to us. Um, nothing happens except Osh is gonna gain his health back. He attacks for one and he attacks back, leaving us with the loss of the source siege. Okay. Okay, so back to them now. He tries to move, he can't. My Spire can attack him. Come on, there we go. So they actually take out the Grizzled Oak before he can do anything. And we're left with the Taproot, which is perfect. Okay. All right, so the Grizzled Oak's taken care of. These guys are still stuck. And it's my turn, so. Osh is going to move this time, and he is going to attack first, taking this guy out completely with his three attack before they can do anything. Okay, but that did put me in a perilous position now because my turn just ended, and this guy is going to go here and here, and impale means... At the end of this unit's movement, deal one damage to all adjacent opposing units it was not adjacent to prior to moving. So you take a hit and you take a hit. And again, I have put myself, I have put Osh in a position where he is gonna get knocked out because this thing will fire unless we roll a perfect two twos, which could happen, but we didn't. So this thing gets hit twice, and it's got an attack of two, and it can again damage Osh twice. So I'm definitely done at this point. Um, you know, this would have continued to play out 
the Battleborn would have hit him and then been knocked out. <coughs> um, and so then these guys would have started free marching one, two, one, two. Uh, this guy would have, I guess I could have chosen, so I could have chosen to attack this one for two, boom, boom. Uh, and this guy would have attacked, boom, boom, like so. And then he would have gone two more, one, two, one, two. So we'll have him attack one. Okay, so it takes him out and then he can attack him for one. Oh, and there he did it, look at that. So, uh, the loss condition was losing Osh, which I did, so this was not a true victory. I just continued playing to see how things would play out. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the tutorial scenario. It went on a lot longer than I expected. Um, that was a massive amount of CP they spent there at the end. I don't even want to know how much. That was like in the 20s. So a ridiculous wave on their part. Um, but either way, uh, hopefully you guys got to see some gameplay. Um, and so you can understand how this game plays solo. Um, be on the lookout for the PVP tutorial since they do a uh, step by step and give you all of the actions you need to take. I'm going to go ahead and do that just two handed. That'll be tomorrow. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.